Hey y'all, welcome to 2021. Lots to look forward to this year. It's the year of the ox, maybe an Olympic year, the potential landing of NASA's Perseverance rover on Mars, for my friend Harv and any other cricket fan, a potential World Cup, and me telling you month to month what's happening in Fusion 360. One thing I can say for sure is that we'll be right here helping you achieve your goals remotely, in person or wherever we end up. Let's dive in. I want to kick off with some general updates for everyone, regardless of what you use the most. After talking to many of you, we learned that the wrench icon we used for extensions was confusing. That's why we've updated the icon to a plug icon. This icon will also appear on tools that belong to an extension pack, such as generative design extension, machining extension, and additive build extension. In the preferences tab, I want to remind everyone you can turn on preview functions that are still in testing phase at the bottom. This will help you see what we're working on and what's coming. One of the things I'll be talking about today needs to be turned on here. All right, as usual, I want to start in the modeling space. First up, thin extrude. New for the extrude command is now an option to create a thin extrude. This will allow you to take the original sketch profile and give it a wall thickness instead of a block of material. We've enabled a lot of options for you to use around direction control and positioning of the extrude. In conjunction with taper angles, thicknesses, and the fact that you no longer have to model every aspect of a walled extrusion, Thin Extrude is helpful when you're doing anything with interior voids or when you want to explore mold making or casting. In truth, the uses for this are actually everywhere. One of the most requested surface features by you has been the ability to untrim a surface. We're happy to report that this update now gives you the ability to create an untrimmed surface from a surface body. You'll have the options for how to untrim the surface, internal, external, all, or manual. This gives you the control to get the right untrimmed surface without cumbersome workflows. Centerline is an addition that will help many of you in the turning space, or anyone who loves using construction lines. This new addition is to help identify the axis of revolution, meaning when you go to revolve something, the command automatically picks up what you've identified as centerline, saving time but you can also use it in your sketch workflow to help better define your sketch to your needs and outcomes. It's simple, but effective. We have a new analysis type within Fusion 360, ISO Curve Analysis. This analysis type will start to show the flow of a surface. This allows you to check the surface and make sure the form is flowing correctly and if the surface blends well with other adjacent surfaces. This should help when tangency and continuity are key to the aesthetics or functionality of the design. Moving over to the drawing section, we've got two new tools that I think are super rad and will help get the point across when you're working with your fabricators, CMs, or just simple reminders to yourself when you're building it. But first, let's go into preview so you can access the first one. Broken views. For anyone who does a ton of drawings, you know how helpful and honestly how much of a requirement broken views are. Well, they're here. In the drawing views section, you'll see the broken view icon. Select it and then you'll be able to identify what portions you want to dissect. For anyone who hasn't used these before, broken views are convenient ways to make more room on a drawing packet. The dimension you apply to your part will still show the actual dimension. So rest assured your part will still come out the way you intended it. You're just saving room and more trees. I've said it before and I'll keep saying it. The more information you can put into a drawing, the more likely you're going to nail it the first time around. Especially if you're outsourcing fabrication. I live by the saying, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So here, Take it slow. Dimension and tolerance and note everything of importance. Taper and slope symbols are one more way you can do this. To use it, you'll find it in the symbols section. Identify the area you want and then use it just like the rest of the symbols. Click, place, annotate, and boom. Dunzo. Alright, that's it for this month. Hello and welcome back to what's new in Fusion 360, January 2021. As always, be sure to take a look through Kaching's blog linked in the description below, for all the details, like bug fixes, user-suggested improvements, and more. In the machining extension, we're bringing some upgrades to the way you can use tool orientation to create multi-axis operations. For a quick overview, tool orientation is available in the geometry tab of every milling operation, and it allows you to redefine the tool axis to access different areas of the part. Previously, tool orientation required selection of a planar surface or straight edge to define the z-axis, where the axis would be normal to the selected surface or along the selected edge. This could be directly from the model or using work geometry, like work planes and work axes. 
In this update, we're also allowing tool orientation to be defined from a point on a non-planar surface. The axis will be normal to the surface at the selected point, further reducing the need to create work geometry for complex parts. We're adding even more control to tool orientation with tilt and turn handles. These appear as graphical handles, which can be used to further manipulate the tool orientation. Now you can adjust the z-axis when selecting geometry, or set a tool orientation without selecting any geometry at all. There is also an Align to View option to align the z-axis normal to your current view, further streamlining the tool orientation process and reducing the need to create additional geometry. Note that both the Tilt and Turn handles, as well as Align to View, are associative. The values that populate the Tilt and Turn parameters in the dialog box will be maintained even if there is a change to the model. For a closer look at this new functionality, watch the video linked in the upper right corner. In Additive, there are some nice usability improvements. First up, there's a preference to control when to generate supports and optimized orientations. Checking the box will maintain the current behavior, which is to generate the support or orientation immediately upon creation or change. If unchecked, supports and orientations will not generate immediately, and you can generate them manually when you're ready. Up next, when creating a new setup from the Additive tab, the operation type is automatically set to Additive. Just one more smart default and one less button click. We have also added support for Creality and GTech printers, including machine files and post processors available in the machine library. Last but not least, the Additive Simulation extension is available for preview. Note that upon full release, this will be a paid extension. The Additive Simulation extension allows you to simulate in-process distortion, possible interference with the recoder blade, and post-process distortion that may occur during the powder bed metal additive process. You can simulate different part orientations or support structures to optimize print outcomes and even generate compensated geometry to reduce final distortion. Note that you will need the Additive Build extension to use the Additive Simulation extension. That's all for this update. Be sure to check out what's new in design, engineering, and electronics, and we'll see you next time. Hi, and welcome to Fusion 360. This is Ed Robledo from the Fusion team, and I'll be telling you all about the most recent update. Let's get started. Under Preferences, you're going to notice that we've added the Reset Grid and the Electronic Options. With this option, you are able to have the grid reset every time you load your design or keep the value from your last session. You know, we like to recommend that you allow the schematic grid to reset every time and on the PCB, keep it deselected. That way you continue to work with the grid that you have from your previous session. As you already know, the design of any electronic project requires having the necessary components available. And if you don't have them, no worry because Fusion 360 includes an easy to use library editor. The library editor includes an IPC compliant component generator that will create the footprint and the 3D model all in the same step. With this new user interface, some of the component properties are now available via tabs instead of having a really long dialog box. Pad sizes could be modified without affecting the 3D model. And if the components have thermal pads, there'll be a third tab in which you can make those changes or add the thermal tab. Yeah, it got that easy. In an earlier update, we added the capability of changing surface mount pads without affecting the original IPC values. With this update, this is now possible with all through hole components, allowing you to fine tune the pad diameter and or the pad drill size without affecting the original model. Great! If you need a bit more space for soldering or need a larger drill size to use alternative components. Please remember that these changes, they don't affect the 3D model. You know, let's stay in the library and let me tell you about another time saving feature. Creating an electronic component consists of making the schematic symbol and a footprint. Then you're going to be assigning each one of the symbol pins to one of the pads. There are components that consist of really large amount of connections. Assigning each pin to a pad 
can be quite time consuming. We have made it possible for you to reuse pin the pad mapping from one device to another one. In this example, I've decided to take the Altera CPLD component, which currently has a single symbol with 100 pins. I decided to separate the original symbol into multiple symbols, making it a lot easier to handle on the schematic. The power pins and the IO pins have been grouped into a single symbol. Now, let's take a look at the original device. Notice that it consists of one symbol with the 100 BGA footprint. The pin to pad mapping has already been done for this device. Now, I've created a brand new device and I added all the symbols that we did earlier. After selecting the footprint, I will click on the connect command to begin my pin to pad mapping. But instead of mapping each one individually, I'm going to simply select the existing mapping that we have from the original device. Now every pin has been assigned to its pad. This just save you countless amount of clicks. Now, our team of librarians have remained busy and have added a library for transformers and they've also expanded the content of our connector library to include FSC and FPC connectors. Thank you for joining us. All this and more with Fusion 360.